Today we're having a throwback podcast. Some podcasts I did in 2015. Choose the fire. You know, we need as a church to choose the fire. Kind of like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know what I mean? (laughs) Today you're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net. We're doing a um, a study on Voxer with people all over the world. It's pretty cool uh, about the letters to the seven churches. If you want in, just send me an email, Conrad at ConradRocks.net. And um, anyway, so we were talking about Jezebel, and I thought, you know, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go revisit an earlier podcast where God was talking about a very real Jezebel that was currently operating today. Amen? So I'm doing a a throwback to that podcast. I edited it a little bit. I took out some stuff that's no longer relevant, but um, like a commercial or something. Amen? So without further ado, here is the podcast. Lifting up the name of Jesus at ConradRocks.net I was praying this morning... A little bit. I didn't even have to pray hard. You know how the Spirit of the Lord will bring to remembrance whatsoever He has told you. And something happened last night that triggered a lot of memories of prophetic words that I've read, visions that I've had, dreams that I've had. And I realized that God is sewing together a message, and He has been doing so at least since 1996, and America is not really listening. And I'm not trying to be doom and gloom or anything like this, but, I mean, you don't even have to be prophetic to see this. You know, it says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. And God has been speaking. And it's like there's this crescendo, uh, this crescendo of, of, of God's message seems to be accompanying a space to repent. One of the things that I've noticed in my circles, my social media, just people that I meet, is this unhealthy desire to see the Antichrist. I mean, it seems to be like people are caught up with this rapture theology. And, you know, in Amos, Amos writes this too, "'Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord.'" To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. That's Amos 5.18. And Christians, with this, this getting so caught up in eschatology, they think that because things are bad, hey, there's nothing we can do. God's going to come. We don't need to repent. They don't even consider repenting. They're sitting here looking from the sidelines for the Antichrist to come. They're trying to guess who he is. They don't even consider repenting. And this is something that I've been seeing for years. And this this infatuation with eschatology is unhealthy for the body of Christ. We need to repent, seriously. Now, I'm going to point out some visions, some events, and just some obvious points here. We see that ISIS is just, there's a Christian holocaust going on. You know, ISIS is just killing Christians and Jews. And and you know that in in the book of Revelation, I'm not saying that that's what this is, but there is a demonic principality that goes after the Jews and also the Christians in Revelation 12, 3 through 5, and there appeared another wonder in heaven. See, this is a demonic principality. Behold, a great red dragon. We know who that is, having seven heads and Ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads, and his tail drew the third part of the stars to heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. You know, this is Israel. For to devour her child as soon as it was born, and she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and 
her child was cut up into God into his throne. So we see here that this Satan, <laughs> the dragon, is cast to the earth trying to kill the woman, which is Israel, and the Christians. This is a demonic principality that is in the heavens and is manifesting on earth. Okay, so this is spiritual warfare that's going on, and this unhealthy predisposition to just look for the Antichrist means that we're not even engaging in spiritual warfare, which part of that is repenting, right? Second Chronicles 7.14. We see that Christians are being killed for their faith. That is something that's happening. Another thing I wanted to tie together is there's lots of things that are adding up to this, that, that all add up together. If you take all the points and you draw a line, you can only see one conclusion. America, and, and I'm going to say the Christians, I'm going to, I'm going to get to that too, but the Christians really need to repent. We're going to talk about that today. Hey, this is Dan, the coffee man. Uh, I'm having coffee with Conrad, with Conrad Rocks this morning. Highpointroasters.com. Now, I was praying a year or two ago with Susan in the living room, and I had this open vision of a candlestick almost falling to the ground. It was in the background of darkness, and the emphasis was the candlestick has not yet hit the ground, but it was very close. The, there was a flame off to the right that should have been on the candlestick. And then to the left, there was a lady in like a nightgown. And through much prayer, we could see that the lady was the Jezebel spirit that happened to be in the churches at that time. The idea behind that vision was the church, you know, the candlestick, had to make a choice. Does it want the fire to be on the head of the candlestick or Jezebel? And during that time, there was something going on with a large group, and I was supposed to send them that vision, and I, and I did. And uh, basically, they didn't choose the fire. And this is something that's been consistent uh, throughout history, when God's when God is revealing something to His servants, the prophets, like Jesus, when He was talking to the Pharisees, they kept bucking Him. Jeremiah, they kept bucking Jeremiah. They kept bucking all of them. And in, in, in Jeremiah, you can see that He sends many, many prophets, and those in leadership refuse to repent. And I, you know, it's just this is a constant theme. And I'm not doing this from a point of animosity or resentment. We need to pay attention to what God is saying. This organization that I was talking to had chosen not to exalt Jesus, even though that's what the Lord was telling them through me and someone else as well. They even told me, they said, yeah, that we had another person come up and say they saw the same exact thing. Uh, the fire was off the top of the candlestick. And I'm like, look, how much more do you, I mean, what are the odds of that? You know, that's mathematically impossible. So most of the things that the prophets say are rejected. Just go through the Bible. Well, one good point is Jonah. He said he had the shortest sermon in history, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. They repented that Nineveh repented. Do you find it interesting that a heathen nation repents and Jesus tells the Pharisees the tax collectors and the harlots will go into the kingdom of heaven before you there's something to that man just go through the Bible yourself and see what I'm saying but most of the times the Lord sends the prophets early in the morning and they're rejected I'm wondering why you know action must be taken okay we cannot stay in this status quo things have to change. In order for repentance to be effective, we cannot keep doing the same thing. Look at the Babylonian 70-year captivity prophecy, you know, in, in Jeremiah 25. Let's uh, talk about that for a second. You can see it's the same thing that's happening in America right now. 
In Jeremiah 25, let's say around verse 4, And the Lord hath sent unto you all his servants the prophets, rising early and sending them, but you have not hearkened, nor inclined your ear to hear. They said, Turn ye again now every one from his evil way and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land that the Lord hath given unto you, and to your fathers forever and ever. And go not after other gods to serve them and to worship them and provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands, and I will do you no hurt. Yet you have not hearkened unto me, saith the Lord, that you might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. So they were having a problem with, with, with false gods, and they said, oh, it's no big deal, it's harmless. You know, it's kind of like the Easter buddy. And then in, in verse 11 he says, and this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon uh, 70 years. So he sent several prophets, and they just refused to repent. Now, in Revelation 18.4, this is in my book. I had an open vision uh, during worship one time. I don't ask for these. They just happen, right? So I'm worshiping in my living room, and I had this huge, everything just kind of came black. <laughs> I was looking towards my kitchen, and this rider comes out of heaven, and he has this crimson cape, and he takes this long black lance, and it comes down to the earth, and that was right when the tornadoes happened. Remember all those tornadoes back in Joplin and so forth? And um, I heard the phrase, Revelation 18.4, Come out of her, my people, that be not partaker of her sins, nor receive of their plagues. So one of the things that happens, too, is we have to remember that the the children of God, if you're not separated, you're going to end up, you're going to end up paying the price that the rest of them do. You know, those that are actually hearing the word of the Lord and are actually like, yeah, that's right. Well, if you're mixed up with them, you're going to end up paying the price too because look at what happened during the 70 years prophecy fulfillment. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, all of them, even though they were servants of the Most High God, they ended up serving that 70-year sentence, right? So we need to be separate. And also, you know, the point I want to drive home today is we as Christians need to repent. Now, something else that hit me, like a ton of bricks recently, and this has really been strong, like pretty much all over the prophetic circuit, man. I mean, it, everybody's saying this. Every The Lord is revealing this to the servants, the prophets, okay? In February, I was standing in church, and I had another vision of this, and it's not one I wanted to see, okay? I had this vision of a tree, and it was like a Christmas tree, and all these candles were coming together. I'm like, no, Lord, why did you show me a, a, a vision of a Christmas tree? You know, that's what I thought it was. But I did, really didn't have the interpretation. And then I see this post in Facebook, this Appeal to Heaven tree. And it had white spots on it, just like I saw. There were candles in my vision. but And I'm like going, dude, that's the tree. And it's this appeal to heaven thing that everybody's talking about now. I hear Dutch Sheets. He just wrote a forward to Jennifer LeClaire's new book. And she's talking about it, too. The title of her book is The Next Great Move of God, An Appeal to Heaven for a Spiritual Awakening. And there's the tree that I saw on the cover of the book. I'm sitting here like going, no way, this is God. I see it at Clay Nash's church. You know, I hear, and then all of a sudden I hear Ryan Lestrange talking about it. Apparently, God is talking about this appeal to heaven. This is an opportunity for Christians in America to bring in another great awakening or to be lethargic, apathetic, complacent, and let America slip through your fingers. And I want to tell you something else. Uh, you notice I've been real excited about this Exalt Jesus Memphis event. In that event, I want you to understand that only the name of Jesus was lifted up. No one's name was even mentioned except the name of Jesus. And going back to the Jezebel vision, okay, in that time, I was asked to endorse some people, and they didn't even have the name of Jesus one time on their entire website, nor was Jesus even mentioned in several of their teaching videos, and I was asked to endorse them. And they're like, look, use your influence to promote this ministry. I'm like, I can't. I can't do that. They don't even mention Jesus. So, you know, we went our separate ways, obviously. 
in this Exalt Jesus Memphis event, that was the only name that was lifted up. Now, I want to add something else. Okay, I said it started in 1996. Okay, in 1996, and I don't know why this is just like everybody should know about this, and I keep talking about it. This is not. This was not done in a corner. You can go to ctab.org, ctab.org, Christian Tabernacle, and everybody knows the book, The God Chasers, but it's like they forget the first chapter, the reason the book was written by Tommy Tinney. Okay, in October of 1996. Uh, the presence of God was at Christian Tabernacle in, in Houston. You know, it's outside of Houston a little bit to the east. Pastor Heard read Second Chronicles 7.14, and this is what the Lord God is shouting very, very loudly. This is even mentioned in the Memphis Exalts Jesus event more than once. I mean, this is a current, current theme, and this is why I'm saying Christians need to repent. It has to do with the Solomon's dedication of the temple, Second Chronicles 7.14, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So this is a constant theme. Now, when this was uttered by Pastor Hurd in October of 1996, the plexiglass, now this isn't like matchsticks, this is plexiglass, it takes a lot of pressure. The plexiglass pulpit was lifted up and split in half with a clap of thunder. The pastor was thrown back several feet and slain in the spirit. And the message of repentance kept people kept streaming into that church and were repenting for several weeks or months uh, after that. Now, I want to tell you something. God, when he does a destructive miracle, you need to pay attention. When he destroyed the veil on the death of Jesus Christ, when he destroyed the veil, it meant the people had access to the Father at that point through Jesus Christ. When he split the pulpit, they didn't think anything of it. They put another one back up. And I'm not saying, and listen, I love the people from Christian Tabernacle, but I'm saying that this is a spiritual principle that we need to actually pay attention to. Okay? Notice that the pulpit was split in two, and we continue to do everything according to the status quo. We're not listening to what the Lord is saying. Why did he split the pulpit in two? Okay? Saying, my people who are called by my name. He's not saying just the leaders, but the people. And, you know, then all of a sudden I see a lot of people getting very, very, very frustrated with the corporate church structure. And I'm not against any of the people at all, okay? I love everybody. and But there's some mindsets that are kind of bucking God here. And I see it over and over and over. The people in the congregations that are seeking God are are having a problem with the, with the corporate structure. They're reading books like by Frank Viola. The first one was Pagan Christianity that started ringing everybody's bells. He's like, you, you know what? Most of the stuff that we do in church isn't even biblical it has its roots in paganism and you're sitting there like going oh my gosh why are we why do we do this in church and it's not in the bible okay or why don't we do what's in acts and why don't we do what's in corinthians so you can look at the bible and you can look at our current structure of the church and you say hey there's something wrong here people are getting fed up with the corporate church because it's blocking the move of god and and i believe the pastors are hearing in the spirit but they're not following the spirit i see a lot of of pastors and I look I love you guys but we need to follow what the spirit of the lord is saying when god is saying something you know they're they're wanting to pass it through a community and you know this problem has been lasting throughout history in John 11:47 you know Jesus was doing all this awesome stuff And it says, then gathered the chief priests and Pharisees a council and said, what do we do for this man doeth many miracles? So they're not, you know, they're not seeing that he's fulfilling the prophecies of Isaiah. You know, the blind can see, the lame are leaping, the dead are raised. They're not doing that. They're not seeing that he was born in Bethlehem. They're not, they're not doing this. They're actually fighting God. And here's why in John 11, 48, if we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. 
They don't want people to believe in Jesus. Do you see what I'm saying? And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. So the leaders that are bucking this move of God, they just don't want to lose their position. And that's that's what's happening. It's sad, and I say that with humility and respect and love from the bottom of my heart. But that's what's happening. You know, and we saw a few churches that didn't want to tell their congregation about the Exalt Jesus Memphis event, and they would rather go hunt Easter eggs. <laughs> so, you know, what are you going to do? Easter, Ishtar, pagan deity, or celebrate the Lord Jesus on Resurrection Weekend? I mean, see what you're choosing? The ball is in the court of the Christians. I'm going to read Second Chronicles 7.14 again, just so you know why. If my people, that's us, which are called by my name, Christians, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven will forgive their sin and heal their land. Daniel, when he prayed the prayer in chapter 9, it was at the end of the Babylonian captivity. He read the book of Jeremiah where that was to expire. And he said, we, he included himself. So we as Christians need to humble ourselves and pray and not get so caught up with who the Antichrist is. Our eschatology could be sending us on the wrong track here. We need to repent. A lot of people are just getting excited about who the Antichrist is, the one world government, and they're not even considering repenting. Okay, We need to fast and pray, get on our knees and seek the Lord. Amen? And then God will heal the land. Thank you for being a part of Conrad Rocks. Please consider sharing this with your friends and family because I believe this is a very important message. And, you know, it's not prophetic kooky. I mean, look, there's so much going on. God is revealing this stuff through several people. This is, (laughs) we need to listen. We need to listen what God's saying when he splits a pulpit in two. You're going to sit back and just say, oh, that's cute. No, man, it's a message from God. It's a message from the Lord. We need to take it seriously. Jesus is not an accessory to our life. He is the Lord. Amen. I am Nancy Petrie from Ms. Partikvah Ministries on Facebook. I have a passion for Christians getting to know that Jesus is Jewish, and I am the author of Jewish Roots Journey, Memoirs of a Mizpah. I am having coffee with Conrad on ConradRocks.net. Amen. So there you go. Now, one of the things before I finish this podcast out, um, the Spirit of God is still talking. You know, do not refuse the one who speaks from heaven. Amen. And he's still talking. And you know what happens? We get so caught up with our routines and our traditions that we're not even paying attention to walking after the Spirit anymore. You know, so that's a problem that we need to rectify. We need to seek the Lord diligently. Amen. Anyway, thank you for being in my life. If this has touched you, please share this with your friends and family on social media. God bless you. Until we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at comradrocks.net.